Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and I'm back with another Vintage G.I. Joe toy review, and I'm doing another requested review video. We are looking at the 1983 G.I. Joe Amphibious Personnel Carrier, or APC. The APC was introduced in 1983, it was also sold in 1984, it was discontinued in 1985, there was no replacement for it in 1985, and really, we didn't see another troop carrier like this in the Vintage line, unless you account something like the Mobile Command Center but that really wasn't exactly the same thing so the APC is kind of unique uh, among G.I. Joe vehicles there were some other vehicles in the line that had personnel carrying abilities like the 1988 Warthog uh, but the Warthog was a bit different uh, it did have a small personnel carrier compartment in the back but it was nowhere near the scale of this APC although the Warthog rivals the APC in size uh, the APC is primarily a troop carrier whereas the Warthog Hog's troop carrying ability is more of a secondary function. There were later versions of the APC that were done in different colors. The APC was worth four flag points and it could hold up to 28 action figures. The APC had a dual use. It was a vehicle, of course, but it was also a figure carrier. You were intended to pile your figures in here and, you know, carry them about. The APC is modeled after the real world VAB, which is a French personnel carrier, and I'm not going to say the French name because I can't pronounce it. The APC was really big. It was the largest land vehicle in the G.I. Joe toy line up to that point. The following year, in 1984, we got the larger uh, hovercraft killer whale, but up to that point, this was the biggest land vehicle you could get for G.I. Joe. Let's look at the parts and the features of the APC, starting with the cannon. And the blueprints call this a 50 millimeter single fire auto control cannon. It can traverse 360 degrees. It does not elevate. The cannon has some excellent sculpted detail on it and it can pop out and it's held on by these three prongs. Next, let's look at the canopy, and this canopy has a really nice camouflage painted pattern on it, uh, and that goes all the way around and from the front to the back, and this looks very nice. It also has a nice uh, canvas type texture to it. Up in the front here, it has some sculpted detail and what I guess is supposed to be part of the cannon's firing mechanism. The canopy is held onto the main body of the vehicle through these four knobs that stick in the holes on the main body, two on each side. And to take the canopy off, you just kind of squeeze it together and uh, lift up. The underside of the canopy does not have the canvas texture pattern, but it does have these tabs, and I'm not 100% certain what they are for, but they may be intended to go between the action figures that you can stand up inside the APC. Up at the front we have this cab cover here, and that is removable. You just kind of flip it forward like that. It has these tabs that uh, go into these notches to hold it on. The cab cover has some nice detail. It also has these portal style windows and that is clear plastic and there's clear plastic here along these sides as well. It's a nice utilitarian look. Inside the cab we have some really excellent detail on the dashboard, uh, some nice seats that looks really good. Even though it doesn't have any stickers on the instrument panel so it doesn't have any color detail or anything like that, uh, it does have some nice sculpted detail. It has a steering wheel and the steering wheel does pop out and it is keyed so it only goes one way uh, it does not turn on the floorboard of the cab it has a metal texture pattern and it has a couple foot pegs in the main body of the carrier it has two frequently lost parts and those are the seat belts uh, they both peg in with a round peg at the front and a square peg at the back and these are just really long thin pieces of plastic uh, these do tend to get lost pretty frequently I know that when I was a kid playing with this we didn't really use these very much so of course they instantly got lost they're intended to go across the legs of the figures that are seated in the APC uh, so it just kind of holds them all in keeps them from sliding around back there and in the main body of the APC you get lots of foot pegs and two rows of seats here along the sides uh, that's room for 26 action figures and with two in the front that that leaves a total of 28 figures that this APC can carry. The APC has six wheels, three on each side, and these are plastic wheels, they're not rubber. Uh, they are held on with a metal dowel axle that runs between them. There's no suspension, uh, but it does roll very nicely. 
One very nice touch with this vehicle is all of the sculpted detail on the bottom of the vehicle. Look at that. It looks uh, like a very realistic undercarriage uh, for a transport vehicle. That's an amazing amount of detail to put on the underside on something that most people probably wouldn't even notice. I'm not certain about APC anatomy, but I'm pretty sure this one is male. On the back, we have even more sculpted detail. We have some tail light covers and some sculpted on tools that looks like a pickaxe and a hammer there and there's even an axe here and it has the what the blueprints call the telescoping bumper. This bumper also functioned as a handle for the carrier so when you filled it with your action figures you could carry it by this and take it over to your friend's house or wherever you wanted to go. One thing I think is missing from this back end is a tow hook. It doesn't have a universal tow hook so it could tow some of the smaller towed weapons and I think that's a missed opportunity. It really would have been a, a great complete vehicle if it had a tow hook back there. Now here is the APC with its full complement of 28 action figures as it was designed to hold them. Now I could show this to you with the 1982 and 1983 action figures since it did come out in 1983 but I just got those up on display and I just can't be bothered to take them down for this video so these are just random figures that I've crammed in here uh, so that it can be I can show you what it looks like when it's full. I have to say I don't think these seat belts do a very good job. Uh, you have to lift the arms up in order to get the seat belts across the laps of the action figures. Uh, it will fit on over the legs of the figures but not over the hands. And even at that they don't stay in all that well. So if you're knocking this thing around I don't think it's going to hold those figures in very well at all. Can it float? Oh you betcha! Like a boss! Overall, the APC is a great vehicle. It's very solidly constructed for rugged play, and it fulfills an important role um, in your G.I. Joe collection, both as a figure carrier uh, and as a great attack vehicle. I don't normally have any interest in uh, foreign issues of G.I. Joe toys, but there was an APC issued for the Action Force line, for the Z Force line in the UK, uh, that was modeled after this, but it's had some better features. Instead of just being a personnel carrier like this, inside it had like a little mini headquarters with computer consoles and a little uh, sick bay with a stretcher, and that's pretty cool. So that might actually be the one foreign issue of a G.I. Joe toy that I actually tracked down. The APC is a massive vehicle, and it has a lot of space inside, and really I can't let that space go to waste. So what I do when I'm displaying it, well, I've got like dozens of these uh, figures that are in plastic bags. They're not complete and so they're not ready to review and they're not ready to display. So I just it's kind of have them crammed in the APC like this and I have like dozens and dozens of them and I just kind of fit as many in there as I can and it just it just still isn't enough. I, I still have more and more. I have the entire APC filled up. I have every other troop carrying vehicle filled up with these these incomplete characters and and this is my secret shame. I, I can't display them, I have too many and yet the sad thing is I keep buying more of them. I admit I have a problem. Somebody please help me. That was my review of the 1983 APC. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're thinking about getting one, I hope you found this video informative. If you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot of great new G.I. Joe toy reviews coming up. You don't want to miss them. And like the Facebook page. Thanks, and I'll see you next time. Fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe oh, is attacking. We're outnumbered. G.I. Joe to the rescue! The G.I. Joe personnel carrier holds 28 members of the G.I. Joe team. Let's go! Go get the new members of the G.I. Joe team! Here's Torpedo and Tripwire! Get the Joe team aboard!